everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of 31 Days of Indie Horror. I'm your host, Jonathan Moody, and I've got an awesome guest for you today. I have Dustin Hubbard here. How you doing, Dustin? Hey, I'm doing good. How you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Now, this is like the third attempt we've tried on this, so I'm really hoping this works out completely, you know? Um, fingers crossed, knock on wood. If not, we're, <laughs> we're done. If this doesn't work, it's done, so... If you're watching this, then we made it, you know. Let's um, go. Yeah. Um, so to begin with, uh, we had done a quick review Thursday episode of Mandroid. So this is our follow-up, and I, I figured just finish it up this year instead of doing, you know, this one next year. Um, you know, can you hear me? Oh, great. I... Why the internet seems to to not like us, you know? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was saying the internet seems to not like us right now. Um, period. So I think there's going to be a lot of that, like a lot of problems. Hopefully, they still hear me talk or whatever if I'm talking, <laughs> or hear you talk if you're talking. So uh, anyway, um, and so we were doing it before, and so I figured. This year, uh, I, we just finish it up instead of doing it next year. Um, and we're talking about Invisible, the Chronicles of Benjamin Knight, which is a sequel to Mandroid. Um, and if I'm correct, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but this this was made like back to back with uh, Mandroid, right? To my knowledge, yes, they were. So they were shot back to back, sort of like Lord of the Rings, except it wasn't mm -hmm. a trilogy. You know, uh, which it should have been a trilogy, and that would have been great. I would have loved like one more. You know, um, what would have been? What would have it been if it had been uh, a um, uh, trilogy? What do you think would have would have been next? Um. Well, I know what. Uh oh. I I, I can't hear you. Oh crap! Oh man! Well, oh, sorry, I couldn't hear you. You kind of cut out there. What were you saying? No worries. There, the next thing they had had planned for these characters was going to be the Legion of Doom. To my knowledge, the the spinoff, you know, kind of uh, full moon universe film with Benjamin Knight, the Mandroid, uh, Doctor Mordred, and Dollman. Oh, yeah. I think we talked about that on the last episode. Mm -hmm. So that would have been next after this. Yep. That would have been cool. You know? Yeah. I'm wondering why they never did that. Do you know? Was it money? Uh, it could have been money. could have been just timing, too. So that's after the release of this movie, there was probably about a good year and a half, two years left with Paramount before everything kind of fell apart. So could have been timing. Oh, damn. Yeah, Paramount went from full moon to later working with Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a big step right there. Um, yep. But, uh, but yeah, no, that's awesome, though, that they were able to, to work on this project or whatever. Um, I honestly, after rewatching it, it is a film that I could rewatch over and over again. Like, it's, it's a fun movie to, like, you know, and it's on Tubi. People can check it out. I think it's also on the Full Moon streaming app. So mm -hmm. people want to check that out as well. But uh, it it has that feel of like early 90s, which also felt like late 80s. <laughs> mm -hmm. it felt like yeah. 80s, so it still looked like an 80s project. Um, did you really like the look of the film? I do. I enjoy the, the vibe that a lot of the the Paramount era... Romanian full moon films have they still have that very much sort of post fall of communism look to them where everything just looks sort of in rubble <laughs> and you know very archaic uh, so there's a there's a, a very specific tone and vibe to it that I always I always enjoyed so I mean I'm looking at it right now and just the just the grain and the the look of like sort of foggy, you know, without mm -hmm. being foggy, 
you know, look to it. Uh, I just, I love that, you know, mm. um, and that's a very much an old school uh, full moon, like, you know, Paramount era full moon had a lot of films like that, you know, that mm -hmm. just felt even a little bit. Well, actually, to be honest, I feel like because I've, I've watched the puppet master movies on Blu-ray, they feel a little mm. bit more polished, you know, and, and maybe that's how they, they even looked a little bit more polished than this movie, <laughs> you know? Oh, crap. Uh, say, say something. Ah! <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hold on a second. It's going gonna, it's gonna to work. We're going to get through this. Can you hear? Uh, you, now you can hear me. There we go. Uh, no, I can tell when it comes back because I can start hearing you. Yep. I can't hear you at that time. So yeah, I was just gonna say, you know, the the puppet masters obviously those are like the crown jewel of you know full moon. So those probably always got a little bit more money and a little bit more attention. So right. than some of the other things. So exactly. But this one, uh, you know, this one still felt really nice. Like you said, it was Romanian, right? So mm -hmm. all the crew was romanian you know probably yes. yeah a lot, of the, a lot of the cast too in a lot of these romanian films they're all they're all romanian <laughs> so there's a lot of the the full moon regular extras and stuff too are kind of like in the background so well speaking of cast let's talk about the cast um so we got brian cousins who mm. played wade and he played Wade in Mandroid as well. Um, and then he fell in love with uh, uh, Zana, mm -hmm. um, who uh, was uh, played this time by Jennifer Nash. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot who the actress was that played her before. Um, I don't know if you remember. I do not, actually. I, I saw Invisible first, so she was always, Nash was always kind of more my Zana. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was actually looking her up, you know, and she's actually doing stuff lately. I'm pretty excited. Uh, she's got a uh, she's got a bunch of projects in development um, right now. Uh, one of them is called The Last Saturday Night. It's a TV series, mm -hmm. and then she's got a TV movie called Hide that she wrote. And is she directing any of them? She's directing all three of them. So. I I remember her being in an episode of uh, Full House back in the day where she was dating Danny Tanner. I think I remember that episode actually because I looked it up. I was looking up her career, and I was like, "Oh wow, she's on Full uh, Full House and Blossom." And yeah, was she dating? Was she dating the father in Blossom too? <laughs> oh, you never know. She could have been. I don't remember her on that show though. I don't either. But apparently she was in it. Um, God, remember David last year, wasn't that? <laughs> <laughs> God, um, she was on Coach, Home Improvement. Yeah, a lot of sitcoms. <laughs> yeah. Well, she was really good. She was very comedic in this movie as yeah. well. She's a much lighter presence as Zana than the original actress was because the original actress was... She felt a bit more mature and super serious. And Tuffy. Yeah, and this Xana is more delicate. Tough, but delicate. And I think she's a bit more likable, personally. Mm -hmm. Now, she was also in The Player as herself. And I'm trying to, like, I don't remember her in it or not. You know, I'd have to rewatch that again. I love that movie, though. I wouldn't mind rewatching that. Many people love that movie. <laughs> Do you not love that movie? I have not seen it in many moons. Um so yeah, she was in a bunch of sitcoms and some she was in silk saw stockings. <laughs> you remember that show? Oh my goodness. I do. Like that was sort of like USA's version of softcore porn. Um yeah, that was a pretty popular kind of like syndicated USA thing. Yeah. Um, and then we have uh, Michael Della Femina. Yeah, um, Michael, De Michael Della Femina. Femina, okay. As Benjamin <laughs> Knight. Mm -hmm. um, and he did a great job. Uh, 
it was fun to see like the invisible man aspect and mm-hmm. light up a cigarette you know with uh, and he's the only the only thing i've ever known him from other than these two movies was he had a small bit role in uh bloodlust subspecies three. Oh, nice as bob <laughs> he was a uh you know he was a full moon guy for a little mm. bit yep um and then uh we got oh we got kurt lowens returning yep. back as drago and he did such a great job <laughs> um and uh we've got david kaufman as writer the new assistant yeah who is trying to get information or whatever trying to steal stuff from them to to give to drago um in order to like free his father yeah and things don't really work out that well for him <laughs> no no and then we got alan oppenheimer as dr knox yeah and Aaron Apali, I'm probably pr- in, uh, pronouncing that wrong as Petrov, and I was asking you earlier if that was the Colonel. I think that's the Colonel. The Colonel. I believe. He was- yeah, he was the Colonel, and Alan Oppenheimer was the doctor that was overseeing Benjamin Knight, who who is important to know. He was the voice of classic Skeletor. Yes, we forgot to mention that. So yes, Alan and- Oppenheimer did, uh, and he also did Man at Arms as well. Yes, and he would also later be seen in Full Moon's Transfers for Jack of Swords as Far the Seer. Nice. So. And he's also in the new Masters of the Universe Revelations, yeah. which everybody hates. <laughs> he is, yeah. His triumphant return as, as Moss Man this time. So. Moss Man, which, I mean, I guess that makes sense because they want yeah. a younger person to play the Man at Arms and Skeletor. Yeah. Mark Hamill as Skeletor, you can't go wrong with that. Yep. Um, so, yeah, so then we've got, um, I think that's it. That's it, the main characters. Everybody else is sort of, you know, other characters, right? Like, nobody's, yeah. there's there's the guy who played the mandroid, I guess, the one who actually walked in the suit. Yeah. Um, but really, other than that, that's it, you know? Um, so, I, I honestly, out of both the these two movies, Mandroid and Invisible, I like Invisible a little better. Um, I think without Mandroid, uh, you know, things might be a little confusing. <laughs> you know, like, yes. I think you told me before that you said you you said this is the first one you watched, so you were probably a little confused as to like the setup, right? Correct, yes. they. My local video store actually got Invisible when it first came out, but they didn't have Mandroid, so I saw Invisible and enjoyed it, but I had to kind of fill in the blanks as far as what happened before it. And eventually, you know, maybe two years or so later, I did find uh, Mandroid at a video store in uh, a neighboring town. And I was able to finally see it. So, because back then, I mean, my only other way of seeing it would have been to, you know, buy like a sixty-dollar VHS tape from the Full Moon Fan Club. So, <laughs> God, things have definitely changed. Yes, so, prices have changed. That's good. Yes, definitely. Like sixty-dollar VHS, maybe. You know, I don't know. Like it sounds, it sounds insane, but truthfully, when you consider video stores are paying between eighty and a hundred dollars, sixty was a steal. And if you bought something like that from Full Moon, they did give you there were like different tiers of free stuff you could have as a as a bonus if you bought a tape because they had to buy those tapes from Paramount, so they had to make their money back too. So, but they would give you free stuff if you bought a tape. Well, it's so funny that they haven't really changed on that. You know, right? Like, if you buy a bunch of their stuff on their uh, Full Moon Streaming or whatever a website, FullMoonStreaming.com or whatever, they still give you free shit. You know, totally. And so, yeah, but you've been a lifelong fan of these uh, films, so I have um, watching these over and 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 the beauty is like you you own these movies, right? Like, I mean, this is yes. Even either it's on DVD or I don't think these are on Blu-ray yet. Um, no, so. and Invisible is one of the small handful of full moon titles from the Paramount era that hasn't seen Blu-ray release yet. 
Do you think it will? I sincerely hope so. <laughs> like, it would be cool to have a Mandroid uh, invisible, like, double feature. Mm -hmm. You know, a Blu-ray. Like, have both of them on there. I don't know if the director is still alive, but he could have some kind of commentary or something. Yeah. You know, I mean, and... yeah. I'm sure Jack Ersgard is probably out there somewhere. I don't know if, what he's been up to. He's certainly uh, never did anything else for Full Moon. He only did these two for them, but... What else has he done, period? Let's see. He did one not... called Rancid. And uh, then he did another one called Strawberries with Real Milk. Okay. <laughs> Um, and then Justice. That sounds fun. Um, Acts of Betrayal. Uh, and before Mandroid, his first movie was called The Visitors. And I'm guessing that's... See, a lot of times a person will direct like one big movie or something or big like mm -hmm. indie film and get someone noticed and then like somebody like Charles Band will come along and say... Hey, I loved your movie. You know, you did a great job. Do you want to direct something for us? How would you feel, how would you feel about flying to Romania and directing two movies with mostly non-English speaking crews? <laughs> and they're like, "Did you did you get into my mind? Did you look at my dreams?" Sure, let's go do it. Because <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe that was maybe that wasn't something they told them. <laughs> oh, hold on. Oh my goodness. I hope you guys can hear me out there. Uh, he can't. So, um, oh, now he's back. There we go. Uh, so, um, but yeah, no, I, I wonder if, no, if nobody ever told them that and they're just like, you know, oh, by the way, here's your tickets to Romania. Have a good, have a good safe trip. Oh, shit. What, yeah. what have I got myself into? Go to these. I'm sure that, you know. You know, and you've, I know you've heard some of these stories too firsthand from like Ted Nicolau and stuff, like going to these areas and these, these time periods were, you know, some, some definitely challenging and trying times, but, uh, you know, they were some pretty, pretty fun movies though. So I think the people that did get those chances and took the, took the risk and said, yes, definitely got some experiences that they'll never forget so of course i don't think any of us will you know sort of even in a way forget what you know these 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 movies you know what i mean and, and so the experiences that these people had must be wonderful yep. um i you know i would love i would have loved to have been there you know or something be like you know working you know for them or whatever mm -hmm. um i still would want to work with them i mean they're they're still out there making fucking movies even with like covid and all this shit oh, yeah. they're out there you know fighting a good fight yeah it didn't stop them for sure so <laughs> exactly um so uh the story wise basically it's the sequel so benjamin knight is uh you know is, is invisible now uh, the Mandroid is still out there, and basically, uh, I, uh, Ivan Drago wants to, I guess, take them down. I don't really know what his real, his real purpose is. Though. Yeah, he's just kind of, you know, doing his dastardly stuff from kind of like what seems like an insane asylum that he's sort of taken over, <laughs> and he's sort of like let. Uh oh. Oh, I think I lost you for a second. I don't know if you're. Uh, Dustin, are you there? Okay, you're back. <laughs> I lost you for a second. Yeah. I know. There we go. Yeah. God dang. <laughs> <laughs> this is sorry, everybody. This is what it's going to be like until mm -hmm. the end of the show, which and we're not going to have a huge long show on this one, <laughs> mainly because of this. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, the, it was an insane asylum or something that they, yeah. they run and he, um, uh, with all these insane people, like I'm, they look like homeless vagrants who just yeah. have nothing else to do, but the, but to like help him out. Yeah. It's funny. He's got a bunch of them that are like his henchmen. And then he still has some that are locked up that he uses for experimentation because he's trying to, I guess perfect 
maybe trying to uh, correct his scars and stuff like that. So, and yeah, yep. and a lot of a lot of those extras playing his henchmen and stuff, those are like full moon regular extras. Okay. Yeah, you know, like you watch and get a good look at a lot of those faces. You'll see a lot of those people in <laughs> Batman <laughs> roles all the time. That's cool. Like they flew them out, or they flew themselves out, or whatever to Romania to shoot. Uh oh! God dang it! <laughs> oh, this is gonna be a fun, fun night, guys. Sorry about this. It's just boom. Yep. <laughs> back. Oh my goodness! You keep uh, it keeps disappearing and keeps you know. And at first it was like you just couldn't hear me, and I could see you moving. Now mm-hmm. it's literally your paws. Yeah, it freezes. It freezes. Yep. So we're we're gonna probably wrap this up in a bit. Um, but like I said, all in all, I actually like Invisible a lot more. You know, um, it's a lot of fun. Um, I I it's b- both these movies I could watch together. You know, back to back, and and that's actually saying a lot. You know. Uh, I uh, would you agree? Would you be able to watch both of them back to back? Yeah, I think it's an interesting story. It's got a cool, like you know, title character with the Mandroid from the first one, and then you know, I think the sequel is kind of like disguised with its you know non Mandroid two title. <laughs> like it kind of suggests that it's going to be a Benjamin Knight vehicle, but it's not totally a Benjamin Knight vehicle. But uh, they're both fun. They both connect really well. And they have a group of main characters, too, that I think are pretty likable. And they feel fun, like, especially, like, when you get to the midpoint of Invisible. They're very much, they seem like sort of a fun, sort of silly band of, you know, heroes. You know, with, like, the the guy in, it, in his motorized wheelchair, you know, with his glasses. And he's got the mandroid, and, you know, Benjamin Knight's Invisible tagging along with him. You know, like, when they bust bust the guy scientist out of the the colonel's office you know and stuff and they bust him out and then on top of that like and then they shoot and blow up like uh one of the cars and stuff I, yeah. like honestly i would think the colonel would be like even more fr- like fucking pissed you know, <laughs> than he was like he just wants to figure out the secret of you know he just is he's too busy imagining what an army of invisible men could do <laughs> like that's true. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's mad with power. He wants that invisible. He wants to be able to have like an army of invisible men to do his bidding. I don't know. <laughs> so that would be cool, though. You I know? mean, wouldn't we all? But <laughs> I mean, wouldn't that be an awesome idea for a movie? Like an army of invisible people just attacking, you know, and everything. That would be awesome. Full Moon should make that. You know, yeah, imagine how much money you'd save by not having to pay actors on camera. So. <laughs> That's true. You would only have to pay the other team, you know, <laughs> like most of the time until you wanted to show the people or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, have them show up or whatever and be, um, you know, like, like I, what I liked was that Benjamin Knight, you know, became invisible and then you, then he became visible, you know, mm-hmm. at, at times. And so I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, I, yeah. you know, I wish he had yeah. more control over that. You know? Yeah, they were able to use it. Was it the, the super con? They were able to, he was able to use that to kind of go in and out of visibility when he needed to. So, and that it's pretty fun. Be, yeah, see, that's an awesome idea for a movie. Right? So, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a pretty fun movie. I, I enjoy it. it and honestly, it, it falls into one of those situations where it's a sequel that I saw before the original or other installments, you know, like a perfect example is, is like I saw Sleepaway Camp three first. So I always just have more of a soft spot for Sleepaway Camp three than I do one or two. So, and I saw Invisible first, so I have more of a soft spot for it over the first one, but I do, I do love the first one. I just think the second one really is, the one where they take what the first one set up and they really actually like make it a really fun movie. Well, I've always been sort of that person that doesn't like to watch the sequels before I've watched the first one. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I don't like to be confused at all. So I, I like, I can understand like watching Chronicles of Benjamin Knight first, 
mm-hmm. and then going, wait a minute, the Vot, wait, this is this, <laughs> you know, um, like I watch, I, you know, one of the ones I, I watched that is not a sequel, but it's sort of in the same line of that is Mallrats. I watched Mallrats before I watched mm-hmm. Clerks. So, uh, but it's not a sequel, you know, it's not, yeah. Clerks, you know, or whatever. It's just a, it's from the same director and it's the same, it's a, a Jane Silent Bob's, you know, mm-hmm. second one. So I, I feel like that, you know, like I, I but I, I would, I don't think I would have watched Sleepaway Camp 3 before Sleepaway Camp was <laughs> 1 just because I would have been just like, ah, I want to know what... You know, I didn't watch Scream 2 before I watched Scream 1. You know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I prefer not to watch sequels first, but, you know, growing up and, you know, video stores were an amazing, beautiful thing, but sometimes, you know, certain stores only had certain installments of things, so you just kind of had to play it by ear and go with it, so that's kind of where I was at. Interesting to know that they had Sleepaway Camp 3 before Sleepaway Camp 1 in the video (laughs) store. (laughs) And let me tell you, that's a very divisive statement to say that I like Part 3 better, because... Everyone loves part one. Yeah, it's sort of an iconic cult movie. And I'm like, yeah, it's there. And then of two and three, which are kind of, you know, in that same vibe because they were shot back to back with the same team. Everyone favors two. Mm. Yeah, everybody favors two. So, all right. Well, hopefully he'll be right back with us in a second. And then we'll probably finish this up um uh, all right we're back um (laughs) so uh yeah so we're just gonna finish this up right now (laughs) we're getting to that 30 minute mark anyway Mm -hmm. um i just want to say thank you dustin for taking the time on your schedule three times to try to do this and everything it just it finally worked in a way where we can I, I'm just going to let it go. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's, you know, hopefully I think it'll be like day 15 or something. And so oh. people, you know, people know through Zoom shit happens. Yeah. You know, it's not perfect. Um, but thank you so much. Um, is there anything that you didn't get a chance to say about this that you wanted to mention? Uh, not really. I just think that, you know, I think mandroid and invisible are two movies from the paramount era for full moon that are probably i think more forgotten or overlooked which is unfortunate because they're actually both really strong movies in their own way so i think that you know if you like charles band's work or if you are a full moon fan it i think it would do you well to go and visit these movies because they're both really fun and like you said they both make a really great double feature fun movie fun effects cool core group of lead heroes a great villain with Ivan drago and honestly something that you know point out they both have really great scores i think especially invisible i think has one of the most fun kind of upbeat scores i think of any full moon movie they were both scored by david arkenstone who was a, a new age musician uh, at the time who also scored robot wars and he did a lot of great work on these movies well awesome that's great so yeah so everybody check the movie out it's on tubi uh check out mandroid first you know don't don't fall into our our problems or whatever. Yeah, don't be me. <laughs> don't be Dustin. Watch watch Mandroid first. Uh, because I mean you can watch Invisible. You know, it, it isn't it isn't that confusing. It's just mm. you're once you find out, oh, there's another movie, then you're gonna be like, Oh, okay, I can watch this now. You know Imagine if they had done a part three and they had you learned to use the Supercon to make the Mandroid invisible. Wow. And it was invisible mandroid hmm. that came to me. <laughs> that would have been an awesome uh, <laughs> awesome third one. That talk about awesome saving trilogy. talk about saving on effects. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't even need the suit anymore. Nope. <laughs> you just have something you just go and just knock people <laughs> like flying. All right. Well there you go. Well, uh, where were you when Charles Band was looking for ideas for another project? 
you know I was stuck in Indiana. <laughs> oh, there you go. Um, and Charles Band, listen to us. We want a we want a Blu-ray, you know, special edition of uh, of the double feature of them. Definitely would be nice. That would be nice. All and right, the every- aspect ratios. <laughs> Exactly, with with special features, commentary, and other shit. Because that's what Full Moon does, and they're really great at that, you know. Mm-hmm. But anyway, everybody, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you like, give us a like. Um, and if you didn't, just let us know why uh, you don't agree with this. You know, our our take on this. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Join us tomorrow for, or join me tomorrow for a new episode of Thirty One Days of Indie Horror. Thank you, guys. Bye.